Therapy has recently became a hot topic. And there are some things that you do not know about therapists in their personal lives, but I'm gonna break it down for you and give you the full one one. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. I am your host, Keandra Jackson, licensed marriage and family therapist here. Now, look, I'm about to tell y'all a little bit of the therapist tea because some of y'all done put therapists on a pedestal and we just as human as you are. For some reason, people think that therapists are superhuman. Like we have these superpowers that we're perfect, that our lives are perfect, that everything is just peachy keen. And that's the furthest thing from the truth. Most therapists got into this work, myself included, because of our own trauma, because of our own issues, because of our own family stuff. And to be honest with you, that's what makes most of us, if you're a really good therapist, a very effective one. Because not only do we know how to navigate this in our own personal lives or have been through it, but we're able to help other people as well to the best of our ability. But I wanna give you guys these five things that's going to help put this into perspective so you can understand and get a little bit more of a clearer grasp on therapists, their personal lives, and some things that you just may not know about us. Number one, we have our own personal lives. <laughs> I don't know why y'all don't get that. We are a whole human being. We have spouses and children, other businesses. Some of us continue to go to school. We have friends and hobbies. We have a life outside of seeing you for therapy, boo. And it's important for y'all to know that we are not just sitting around 24-7, 365 days a year, seeing clients, doing paperwork. You're like, no, listen, we wanna go home at the end of our therapy sessions, just like you wanna go home. We got other things, we gotta cook, we gotta clean, we gotta do all of the normal things that everyone else does. And so you have to remember that being a therapist it's just like anybody else's job. And it depends on if they are in private practice, meaning they work for themselves. I can guarantee they got a lot more on their plate versus someone who actually just works at a community center or an agency or a hospital, prison, or things of that nature. Because being an entrepreneur and being a therapist is a completely different ball game. Trust me on that. So just remember we have our own personal lives. So if you are reaching out past office hours, <laughs> And it ain't an emergency, baby. That phone call, that email, that whatever is going to have to wait until the next business day because it's important for us to set boundaries and have some type of harmony. Because you know I don't use the word balance over here. Some type of harmony in our personal lives and our professional lives. So remember, we got lives too and we are trying to live it to the fullest just like you are. Number two, therapists may also have their own mental health issues. Now you're probably like, wait, 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 wait. How in the heck? Yes, honey, we have our own mental health issues. We have our own relationship issues, our own marriage issues. Some people experience depression. Some ther like I literally have therapist friends who are also clinically depressed. I have therapist friends who have a diagnosis of a personality disorder. I have friends who have a diagnosis of being borderline. I know. This is a thing. And so just because someone has a mental health issue or mental health diagnoses, that does not mean that they cannot help you. Remember, that is only one aspect of who they are and their life. And also remember that life gives you lemons and lemonades. <laughs> I have been in seasons of my life, truthfully, where I have been going through while I have been working clients. For one example, I vividly remember when my grandmother passed away, who was the matriarch of my mother's side of the family. And it was huge. We were all so very close to her. But I remember grieving and going through that process, which is a lot, while also helping my clients who experienced death in their lives too. That was the hardest thing that I ever, 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 ever had to do. Now, while that wasn't a mental illness, but it just shows you that we have our own personal challenges, our own mental health challenges, while we're still trying to help you. So not to say that we're gonna tell you all of our business and everything, because you know that there is some type of ethical you know, guidelines that we have to follow here. But I just want to let you guys know that oftentimes your therapist may be going through something that you don't even know about. 
and you need to give them a little grace just as much as we give y'all grace. Number three is that oftentimes, especially if your therapist is an entrepreneur, they have their own private practice or even have other businesses outside of doing therapy because that's a thing too, y'all. <laughs> we often struggle with work-life balance, especially entrepreneurs. We know, especially if they're in the grinding phase, if they're in a startup, if they're just now getting their things off of the ground, it does take a lot of time. It does take a lot of energy. It does take a lot of work. It does take a lot of hours, right? Outside of the things that I mentioned about family, friends, and all of those things. It takes a lot of that extra time. And sometimes we have to figure out what that balance, that harmony looks like for us. And so I know that there have been periods of my life where I was go, 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 grind, 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 and everybody else, family, friends, romantic interests, everything else got pushed to the back burner. And that is eventually gonna to lead to the thing that we're gonna talk about next, which is burnout. But talking about this topic, it's important for us to have a life outside of therapy. Being a therapist is a lot. Can you imagine people telling you all of their issues, all of their problems, all day, every day. Woo <laughs> it is a lot, right? And you have to be built for this. I don't think people just wake up being like, I should be a therapist one day, let's do it. I think it's a calling. I think it's something that God puts on the inside of you. And there's, it takes a certain type of person to be able to manage this because I know other people who would not be able to even handle 1% of the things that people tell me. Can you imagine just how annoyed you get when your family and friends call you about drama? And you're like, oh, I'm so tired of this. I don't know what to tell this person. Can you imagine eight people a day, five people a day, however many clients therapists see these days. Can you imagine doing that? Woo, over and over? It's a lot, it's a lot. So work-life balance is a thing. And hopefully the therapist can get to a place where they understand that they can work hard, but they can play just as hard. One number four is burnout. Like I mentioned before, because there may not be a work-life balance harmony situation, as I like to call it, some people get burned out. They get to a place where they're just like fed up. They don't want to do it anymore. They're tired. They're exhausted. Or they continue to stay in the role and be a therapist, but not be as effective because they just don't care as much anymore. And it's not because of the client. It's because they haven't created the space and the time and the energy and the harmony in their own life to be able to equip themselves to manage all of the things in multiple hats. So burnout is a real thing. And there are so many therapists who choose to leave the therapy field all together, like therapy ain't for me, I need to go and do something else, bye! Or who choose to no longer see clients. I am one of those therapists who chose, well, kind of a little bit chose because God told me to stop seeing clients, but that's another conversation for a whole nother day for people who understand how God works in your life. To date, as of the recording of this video, it's been three years since I've seen a client in therapy. Now I am a therapist, I have a active license, and I continue to give you guys content but I do not see clients one-on-one -on -one in therapy anymore because I understand that I have a global message. I understand that I can help people one-on-one -on -one and I wanna encourage other people to do that. Other therapists who know that that's your lane, do that. But there's some of us who have been called to a greater space who have been called to impact more people and is going from a one-to-one -one model to a one-to-many model. I have been called to a one-to-many model. So you'll see me doing television, speaking engagement. I have multiple books. All of these things, right, is because I'm reaching more people with my message, with my words, and essentially doing the same thing that I would be doing in one-on-one -on -one therapy sessions, but doing it to a wider audience. And number five, the last thing that I think you guys should know about therapists and about their personal lives and some stuff that you didn't even know is that therapists will miss from time to time. What I mean by that is this, therapists are not perfect. <laughs> that means we don't always have the answers. We don't always know what to tell you. We don't always have examples to give. We don't always have suggestions. We don't always know. Sometimes we will get it wrong. Please remember that that is okay. That is normal. If a client misses on interpreting something that you said, or if there was a miscommunication or something of that nature, 
it's okay. We're going to figure out what the solution is. We're going to rectify the situation, but please give us grace to know that we're not perfect either. And also some therapists probably need to remember that too. Like it's okay for you not to get things right 100% of the time and to know that you're going to be wrong, but trying to figure it out is a part of the process. I can't count how many times I have literally told a client, I honestly just don't know. Or you know what? Let me check into that and get back to you. So by our next session, I should have an answer for you. Or sometimes things don't even need to be said, but all clients might need is my presence. Sometimes clients just may need my silence and they put the pieces together on their own without me having to interject and giving solutions. So there's so many different therapeutic techniques and ways that people can get to their end result, but just remember that therapists will miss from time to time and that's okay too. So because we've talked a lot about what therapists do and don't do, it's a wrap. Now look, I want to leave you guys with this final nugget to understand that boundaries are a part of this conversation, self-care is a part of this conversation, and all of the things. You have to remember that therapists are just someone who has a job, <laughs> just like you got a job. It's just that our job looks a little bit differently. And I want you guys to take this nugget with you because this is one thing that I was talking to my mentee about the other day. She asked me, how does it feel when you don't have firsthand experience on something that your clients think you should have firsthand experience on? And so I want to remind you guys too, and I know people are going to take this a different way, but I have to share it with you just because your therapist is a certain thing that doesn't mean they're going to be effective at it. Just because your therapist is not or does not have a certain thing doesn't mean they're not going to be effective at it. For example, relationship status. I get people all the time, not so much now because people have seen my work. They know I can deliver. The numbers don't lie. And if you still don't want to rock with me because I'm not married currently, then that's on you. You can find another therapist that's a good fit for you. However, I remember in the early phases of my career, people would be like, I'm not listening to her. She's not even married. So <laughs> my relationship status has absolutely positively nothing to do with my effectiveness. I am not sitting here talking about, I just read a book. Now I'm just going to walk into your life and apply what I just read to you. No, 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 no. This is knowledge. Yes. That I received through textbook and going through graduate school, but it's also knowledge of me doing 3000 plus hours of working with couples. So you think it's just textbook knowledge? Oh, no, 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 This is applied knowledge, meaning I have worked with people, gotten the results, and this is how we're navigating. So people think, well, why don't you just apply the same thing to your personal life? It's not always that easy. There are other factors to it, right? And I even give the example of you would never, ever require a doctor, your medical doctor, to have the same exact issue you have in order to treat you. You would never say, doc, have you had breast cancer? Because if not, you cannot treat me. Doc, do you have high blood pressure? If not, you cannot treat me. Doc, do you have an exact cut on your arm right here? If not, you cannot treat me. Like it does not work that way. But for some reason, we put that same energy on therapists and say, well, if she not married or if he not married or if they ain't got kids or they ain't, they ain't been married long enough, I'm not listening to them. And this was like, you guys are missing out on so many gems, missing out on so much because you have a perceived expectation of what someone is and the knowledge base that they have. And you are going to miss out on that because there is something called vicarious learning. There is something that says you don't have to experience things firsthand in order to know how to effectively do it. I have a best friend who is amazing at working with children. Daycare, no, like to the T, baby. Okay, she's in high demand. She ain't got not one kid <laughs> from herself, right? Like she does not have children of her own. So do we say like, oh, she's not good at that? Absolutely she is. So remember that your therapist doesn't have to have the thing or not have the thing in order for them to be effective or not effective. Take it as it is, look at their track record, look at who they are, look at what they can provide in the therapeutic relationship and take it from there. Now, if you are still hell bent 
on no they have to have children like me they have to have the exact number they have to have proof 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 then go ahead keep your mouth quiet do not talk negative about that particular therapist but just go and find somebody else that is a better fit for you so thank you for taking the time to watch another episode of the Keandra Jackson show and I'll see you next time bye